Yo guys, what is going on? JPS back for another video. And today we're going to be reacting to German Playgrounds. Are Playgrounds better in Germany than in the USA? And then the title follows with Our American Kids Love Them. And this video is a direct follow to a video I made last week on what it is like raising a kid in Germany. And in that video, German Playgrounds were described. And there were some pictures of them and kids climbing up on walls and all of it was very shocking to me i never even thought of that as a possibility of playgrounds purposefully having unsafe conditions or unsafe areas so children are taught to you know take risks and learn from their mistakes like that was unfathomable it, it wasn't even in my head and it was really shocking so i figured it'd be good to follow that video up and get some more in-depth information on german playgrounds as it's such a new concept to me, and I really want to learn more about it. So hit the like button, hit subscribe, and let's get it. Everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Sarah. Hey, I'm Kevin. And we are an American family of six with four kids. And a cat. Who moved from the USA to Germany in February of 2021. And on our channel, we share what it's been like for us and our personal experience of moving abroad with four kids. And a cat. <laughs> that poor cat she's having to learn to speak german and she's hunting mice lots more mice here than she our is. old place <laughs> she's already exterminated all the legless lizards in our yard they're they're i haven't seen any for a oh, couple wait, months what are they called in german again blind bl um i don't know i haven't seen it in german ah y'all told me on instagram and now i've forgotten um <laughs> Well, welcome everybody back to our bedroom. We haven't uh, filmed here for a while because we've been out and about uh, traveling and yes. stuff. So a lot of our videos lately have been of us doing things. So, but it's nice to yeah. get that to get to sit down here and talk with you guys again. Yeah, you guys seem to really like these videos where it's the two of us talking and sort of like a deep dive into German culture. So we wanted to offer that again for you. And also, we get a lot of comments about. Uh, you know, will you travel farther north? Will you get out of Bavaria? And, and we want to let you know that we actually haven't been traveling at all. <laughs> Even though we have all these travel videos, we have not spent a single night in a hotel room since we moved here. No. Everything you see on our channel, less than an hour, point, less than an hour yes, drive away, <laughs> has been 45 minutes. Yeah, 20 to 45 minutes away, maybe an hour. Yeah, 50, 50 minutes. There's two places we went that were 50 minutes. There were 50 away. minutes. Yeah. And so we've only done day trips with our kids thus far. And uh, I don't know, it wasn't really a conscious decision for me, at least, was it for you? I don't know, I just... Well, you, you, you get the low-hanging fruit. All these things are closed. Yeah. You might as well do them first. And to us, our area is 100% new to us. We didn't know anything when we moved here. So even just our local area felt like a <laughs> playground. Like, right. oh, we've got so many cool castles and, and things to see just within 45 minutes of our house, which I hope this is a reminder to you from wherever you're living in the entire world. I think sometimes we think that things further away are very exotic when there's always beauty right around you to be seen that you maybe Flex. didn't even know was there. So yeah. I've really enjoyed getting to see our local area. Now, that being said, I love the ocean. I, w I am really excited to get to see the North Sea and to get up to the north of Germany. Um, so definitely at some point we'll be getting up well, there. Spoiler alert, we already have booked uh, something for summer vacation to go up yeah. farther north. <laughs> uh -huh. We are taking our kids to Berg Elz in August. I know that's not the north north of Germany, but it's... North from here. It's six hours away from here. <laughs> right. <so>, yeah. <laughs> it's another four hours to the North Sea from there, I think. Four or five hours, so... Anyway, we're getting farther north, but it will be our first trip in a hotel. What are we talking about today? Playgrounds. Playgrounds. <laughs> Playgrounds were one of the first things we noticed after our five days of quarantine. Well, remember? The playground was the very first thing we ever did. Did. And so we, we left our house uh -huh. after being in quarantine and went directly to a to playground. playground. Which is just down the street from our house. Yeah. It's an <coughs> awesome playground with this huge field. Yeah, so after our first five days here, uh, we spent in quarantine in February and, and then we had to leave the house to go to to the next town over to get a uh, COVID test and we played on the playground. So we noticed then, wow, this is kind of different than what we're used to in America. We noticed right away it was different. Mm -hmm. And so today we wanna to talk to you about how the playgrounds are different here and why we love them. So to start off, we wanna say with, in the US, 
it wasn't like our kids didn't like the playground there. We would go to a playground and they would play on it and they oh, loved yeah. it. And they're colorful and bright. And uh, there's, we're not really saying there's anything wrong with American playgrounds, okay? That's not really the point of this video. It's to talk about how different and how the mindset and kind of concept behind German playgrounds are different. And there's actually a number of books and articles written on the subject. It is a thing, German playgrounds being different. So the first thing we noticed is that parents are really involved with their kids on the playground, and that's both the mothers and the fathers. I would take our kids to the playground quite a lot uh, in America, and I was always the only dad there most of the time. Yeah. It was really weird. I mean, I feel like- It's yeah. weird to see dads. You, you don't see dads. I mean, even on the weekends and stuff, you, you don't see dads taking kids to the playground. And here, there's dads, there's yes. moms. Um, and they're out there running around, climbing on the stuff, playing with their kids. You know, a lot of times in America, the parents are sitting down, watching, maybe looking on their A lot of the times, all the time. And that's if there's parents there. Usually it's just the kids, send the kids to the playground, they'll walk there. I mean, listen, this is, this is a great video so far. I want to watch more from them already. Like, I'm, I'm already invested phones that's um, all american parents do they're, they're just uh, doing this life. i mean at least that's been our experience <laughs> and i was guilty you know? of that so i'm not judging i, I did it too <laughs> um and so here the parents are just really involved you know they're sitting mm. in the plant in the sandbox with their kids and uh and especially like i said there's a lot of dads so i don't feel weird taking my kids to the playground here it's just normal i mean how sad is it for a dad to feel weird taking his kids to the playground yeah, yeah. That should not be normal. That's not okay. Right. <laughs> it should be normal for dads to be involved in their children's lives. They are their dads. <laughs> right. But anyway. So speaking of parents being on the playgrounds, many of the playgrounds here, at least in our area, have a little alm or a little snack stand. And they're like a mini alm. Yeah. And they, they serve like, some of you even serve, I think, Versed. food that's yeah, they been have... cooked. They're like currywurst and yeah, yeah. apple strudel and apple kuchen mm -hmm. and uh, that's apple cake. And um, so the parents sit, they're not on their phones. They're talking to each other or they're watching their kids and playing with their kids. And then they can walk over to a little snack stand, grab a beer. So you can't just drink a beer on a playground in America. Uh -uh. In fact, you would be like, you know, yeah. there would be some shock if someone saw a, a parent drinking a beer on the playground. <laughs> that would not be okay. No, it wouldn't go over well. But here it's so normal. Like you're sitting there drinking your beer while your kids play in the playground. I mean, mom and dad can have their good time and so can the kids. <laughs> <laughs> so thumbs up. <laughs> And then another thing we've noticed is, I don't know what to call it, playground tourism. I don't know, but we, uh, you know, yeah. we end up, you know, we'll go and talk to other parents and they won't be from the town. They'll be from the next town over <laughs> and they'll come. And so they'll just go to different playgrounds, take their kids to different playgrounds because there's always different equipment and different mm -hmm. playgrounds in different places. And so, Damn. you know, they'll take a little bike ride. If it's nice weather, they'll take their kids and, and go for a little bike yes. ride from, you know, for 15, 20 minutes to the next town over and go to the playground. Uh, we've met several really cool families that, you know, at the playground, we're expecting them to be, you know, local locals, but they're from the next towns over. It's kind of neat. And the fourth thing we've noticed is that the playground equipment here is really unique for us. It is a lot <laughs> different than what we're used to in America. We have noticed that it really encourages the children to use their critical thinking skills, work with other children to make the equipment work yeah. or move and, and yeah, just use their critical thinking skills to be able to play on the equipment. And you can see them like thinking as they're trying to figure out how to play with it. Yeah. And we really like that. Yeah, there's so many different types of things. Like, you know, there's these pulleys and buckets, and so you can fill up with sand yes. and pull it up the bucket and then put it in little chutes and go down. And usually you need two kids, you know, one down on the bottom to fill it up, the other pull it up, and so they have to work together. Or they yeah. have these balance beams, but they're not just regular balance beams. They're connected to, they're connected together in segments by little rubber connectors, and they're mounted on springs and so they bounce and wiggle around and so you know, my, very hard to stay on <laughs> yeah, my kids will get on it and they'll pay, play like king of the hill on these things you know and they'll like bounce and jiggle and you know try and knock the other kids off and so it's not just to try and walk across it but then they interact and how can they b bounce the other kids around just really neat and 
there's this we've, I've only seen this at one place but it's it's hard to describe it's like this hard rubber sheet thin thin sheet and it's suspended in the middle over a little cylinder that can ro that can rotate Yo. and so this this thing sort of goes back and forth and like what some kids are on one side and some kids are on the other and if you bounce on them in just the right way it's almost like a little trampoline and seesaw and, and seesaw yeah, it's like yeah. a trampoline seesaw Coolest all thing together ever. bro y'all have some crazy gear like I have never seen any of these in my life, like any of these this playground equipment. If if they had these around when I was a kid, man, I would have gone crazy. I would have had some fun times at the playground. I don't know. Our our the playground equipment I remember using was always kind of lame and eh, never was anything crazy really. It's just ingenious and mm -hmm. like it takes you a while to figure out how do I do stuff on yeah. this? You know, it, it's it's just really <clears throat> But at when I was at the playground there were never and you know unless I was really young But you know once I got to that, I don't know what age really but there were never parents never They were only parents with like the really little kids once you get to like even slightly little it's, you're kind of on your own creative and then there's the, the the spinning wheel of death, as some of you called it in the comments. <laughs> but it's like this this wheel, this this disc. It's not a disc, a wheel. It's a disc that's at an angle, yeah. and the kids run on it like this. And it spins around like a hamster wheel. <laughs> yeah, and they have to like all work together with other children and figure out like, okay, how are we gonna let this kid on? Oh, how do we stop it? Okay, now where do you sit and how do we spin it around together? And it's really cool to just sit. Maybe this is why German parents watch their kids because it's actually interesting. <laughs> you can like watch them thinking, you can watch them trying to figure things out and you're like, wow, this is a classroom outside on a yeah. playground and the kids have no idea they're learning. They're just having fun. So we really like that. And, yeah, and then the, my favorite one I've seen in a couple different places. There's, it, it's this big giant contraption, and there's these different poles hanging down in different spots, and there's a little place for a kid to hold on on this pole, and they're oh, yes. can, they're connected I in the middle. Thing but very loosely connected but if you bounce on one right you so can you, you can get the other person so if you bounce fun. it and can make the other person go up and you know try it's it's just there's so many different ways you can make it move and when you interact with the other people playing it's just really neat yeah, and I'm sure to you Germans, you may be hearing us talk and be like, duh, I've seen oh, this yeah. stuff my whole life, this is so boring, like that's, not, that's nothing interesting to me. But like for an American, or maybe yeah. from people coming from even other countries, uh, this is very unique to us. We've never seen playgrounds like this, and it, they're just so creatively done. And we also like how they're all so, so natural. Most of the, the playgrounds in our area look the same for you, you know, up in Hanover and Hamburg and Dusseldorf and Berlin and all over the country. They're all similar. Yeah, they're, they're similar and they look like they're made from materials that you find outside. They're yeah. logs. Yeah, it's wood. less plastic and metal, though there's still, I've seen two playgrounds that do have some metal and plastic, which is fine, but for the most part, they look very natural. Yippee! They look like they're just part of the woods. Well, Ella called one of the parks in our own town. Ella calls it the Wood Park yeah. because it's got all these little treehouse things built in the yes. trees, and it's all wooden. So she, so that's that's the Wood Park. So I know know what she means when she says the yes. Wood Park. So another big thing here in Germany, which we want to do a whole separate video on, is self reliance and teaching independence at a very young age here in Germany. And we have definitely experienced this culture now living here. But we'll do a whole video on that. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe the next video. We have seen this with the playgrounds here in Germany. Now it's all within reason. The parents aren't crazy here and just let their one and a half year old go running on a piece of equipment that's built for a 10 year old. They, they don't do that. Uh, they're, they're, they use their common sense, right? Um, like, so I have seen for the most part, eight kids ages like three and under, the parent is still with them and is still holding their hand, helping them on the playground. But after the age of three or four, you're pretty much on your own mm -hmm. and the kids just can have full range of the playground. They can do whatever they want. No parent is telling them to stop doing anything unless it's being mean to another kid. That's pretty much the only time I've ever seen a child be chastised on the playground, including us. <laughs> be nice to your sister. <laughs> um, 
but you can definitely see the self-reliance in action on the playgrounds. But I do like how the parents, they're still nurturing when it's necessary. You know, if a child falls down, I had this impression from some of the articles I'd read that German parents don't comfort their children when they fall down, uh, no, things like that. And it was like, what? <laughs> no. Surely this, it, surely they don't take it that far. And I, they don't. No. Uh, on the playground, if a child falls down, you always see them. Uh, dads and moms, not just moms, you see the dads holding them and cuddling them and mm -hmm. um, they act like normal loving parents <laughs> when it is necessary. Yeah. But when they're bigger, you do see them like, you know, sort of brush it off and like, you're okay, you know, get back up, you're doing fine, you know, kind of attitude. And then once the kids are, what, eight, nine or so, then their parents aren't even there. They yes. ride their bikes or walk yes. or take their rollers, their scooters uh, yeah. to, to the park themselves. And they yeah. totally self-sufficient. They just aren't go even by there. themselves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're like counting down. The, no, we're not really. Ella's four, so we got a little bit longer. <laughs> we got of, some time. Yeah. We still need to help her. <laughs> yeah. But eventually we won't even have to go. <laughs> <clears throat> Damn. That, I mean, like the more... Um, um, learning about like German playgrounds, the more it just makes sense. Like it, it does make a lot of sense. But uh, hmm. yeah, I don't, <laughs> I'm kind of speechless here. I'm like, wow, this is, this is a, it's a pretty good playground system you guys have, honestly. I think, I think honestly, a lot of the reactions you get from Americans who are kind of freaked out by the German playgrounds is mainly because when you're first introduced to it through some of these videos and and social media and stuff like all we're seeing is a bunch of little kids on a wall and the general like tone and the way they're describing it is as if like the German parents don't care at all and they want their kids to fail and learn which is great but like it's a bunch of little kids on the wall like when I just saw that with no other information of course I'm gonna like react and freak out like that's crazy I've never seen anything like that but I, considering what they're coming from and being raised like that, it makes sense for that to be a normal thing. I never thought I'd be saying that, but it does make sense. But I would say like in America, at least where we lived, it wasn't safe for kids to go walking or riding their bikes anywhere outside of a neighborhood. Within your own neighborhood is safe and there's many playgrounds within neighborhoods right. in the U.S. In our neighborhood, unfortunately, we did not have a playground. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, many neighborhoods are built with a pool and a playground at least in Georgia, in the South. Um, I think that's kind of widespread throughout the U.S., maybe not the pool part. But um, yeah, so you can go to the local playground in your neighborhood, and it's safe maybe for a child of 9 or 10 to go by bike or walking to that. But outside of your neighborhood, forget about it. You well, don't want too, your child it's out. It's too far anyway. <laughs> it's usually. too far and too, way too dangerous because yeah. you'd be riding on highways. You'd be riding on very busy streets, you know, because roads there are not made for people to walk or ride their bikes. It's only made for cars, uh, except for maybe in very specific small areas. Or in the cities, maybe it's a little different. Yeah, right. Like in a city or a town that's built for pedestrians. But those are very rare, mm -mm. you know. Yeah. So in one of our previous videos where we talked about how our kids are experiencing Germany and what they're like, and we had talked about how they love the playgrounds, and many of you mentioned the Achtung, is that how you pronounce it? Achtung. Achtung. Yeah. The Achtung baby book. And you mentioned a few articles where I could go read about the German playgrounds and how they are riskier here, that they don't worry too much about it being super safe like they do in America. Well, Americans go overboard. It's such a litigious uh, yeah. society, so you it's have to be really careful. because of that. I think they would be less worried if there weren't so many lawsuits going Maybe. around, so that's sad. And we did enjoy the video on raising self-reliant children by the lady who wrote Ak, Ak Tong Baby. Uh, she's an American woman who moved to Berlin and was just in awe of how German parents just sort of let their kids go and, you know, are using a, f a fork and a knife at a very young age and learning how to light, light candles at three years old and in kindergarten and all that stuff. So, uh, like I said, we will get more into that in another video. But that is part of the playground. Uh, equipment being riskier, higher, bigger, more exciting, more fun, really. Yeah. So also in that video, many of you left us some really great comments about how the playgrounds are in your area and sort of self-reliance and German culture as it relates to children. So we wanted to highlight a few of your comments and read some of them. 
Uh, we really do appreciate and love your comments. So. So, so, um, honestly, I think I'm going to end the video here. This is a really good video, but, uh, we really came here to learn about the, our playgrounds better in Germany. And now it's more so just about comments. Um, uh, well, I guess, should we re, should we watch this? Alright, I, I guess we should watch this, honestly. This looks pretty interesting. I was thinking this was going to be unrelated, but it looks like the comments are about German playgrounds. So here we go. <laughs> so the first one is, uh, also, other people in the village will have an eye on your kids when you aren't around, and if a stranger would talk to them, you bet someone walks up and giving them hell. We don't mess around with some strangers talking to kids. Yeah, and I definitely can feel that in Germany. Uh, to an American, you might feel like you're getting bossed around <laughs> when you first come here. Like, why is that? Why are those people telling me how to parent my children or why are they telling my kid what to do? But um, once you understand it from the, the perspective that they have a community mindset and yeah, everybody's commu watching yeah. out for everybody. And so, you know, when people are telling my kids to get away from the sidewalk or whatever, that they're just being a community member and, and being kind and trying to help my child not get hurt and watching out for each other. Yeah. And I really like that. So here Blue Dragon 2 says, in summer you'll probably forget you even have kids, you'll never see them. Smiley face. Because <laughs> <laughs> they'll be off at the playground. That's right. Or the Schwimmbad, yeah? Yep. Mm -hmm. Swimming. Which this has been a rather chilly summer, so we haven't been swimming too much. I'm glad well, we, playgrounds. we read the comments. In our town, most of the playgrounds were rebuilt over the last years, and everyone is different. They build around a special theme, for example, pirates, castles, dwarves, ships, dragons, and so on. It's really nice. One is packed with slides and at different heights and a tower which is 18 meters high. Whoa. 18 meter high Whoa. tower, that's pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ella. Yes, you can go out and run in the rain if you want to. There you go. Ak tong baby. No. <laughs> Apocalypse says, I think most playgrounds I have experienced were mostly made of wood and metal, like you mentioned, usually very mechanical and inviting. I grew up in the Bavarian National Forest at the border to the Czech Republic where we had a Wald Spielplatz, a forest playground with different stages and areas. Uh, I love this part. And if I walked long enough, I reached the wild enclosures with wolves, bears, and lynx. Whoa, cool. I want to go to a playground that has animals like that. Yeah, let's take our kids there. That, that sounds awesome. Here, Turbo78 says, I know some small cities or larger villages here in northern Germany where kids are involved in planning new oh. playgrounds. And I did find an article, which I'll link in the description box below. This article was about people who live in Berlin and the playgrounds there. And it does say that the child, they involve the children in the planning of the playgrounds. That's a whole new spin on customer discovery. That is so awesome. <laughs> okay, so Lacuna555 says, here in Northern Germany, where I live, the playgrounds are the same as how you described them. I think many Germans love their kids to play in a natural environment. You could also check out German Waldkindergarten, forest kindergartens. It is a great opportunity for younger kids to learn about nature and play in a very healthy environment, and it is very popular here. And one of Ella's good friends. Yeah, she goes to a Wald kindergarten. Uh-huh, just down the street. So cool. All day, every day, rain or shine or snow, you're outside. Ella keeps yelling in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Ella is currently playing in the rain, so she's having a fun time. Um, but yeah, the, the Wald kindergarten, they spend the entire day outside. Rain, snow, it doesn't matter, uh, they're outside. Um, if it's very, very cold, they do have a little hut they can go inside. <laughs> and there is a fireplace in there, uh, or a wooden stove, um, in the one in our, right outside of our town. But I do know they, they like sing a lot of songs in a circle with guitars and play music, and they also just like get to explore and be in nature all day. I mean, it's it sounds like a kid's dream. Yeah. Absolutely a kid's dream. And so Arno Dobler says, in my town, we have a water playground where they can learn how water power works. Cool, so I guess probably like... Ella, okay, we're recording a video, honey. We'll be done in about five minutes. And then we have to play in the rain with you, okay. I would love... Cool. Mommy, you, you, you can hold hands together? 
I'm not going in the pool, Ella. Can you kind of pull on me? It is too cold to go in the pool for me. Poppy, but sometimes when it rains, it, it feels it's going to be warm. It feels warm. Ella, do you like German playgrounds? We're talking about the playgrounds here in Germany. Hi, Ella. Hi. What's your favorite thing on a German playground? Or here on the playgrounds? Uh, <laughs> You're like, I don't know. Me? Do you like the seesaws? I like the seesaw. And you like those big round um, circles that you can swing in? Do you like them? And you like the zip lines? Sandbox. Sandbox? Sandbox. And zip lines. We didn't talk about the zip lines earlier. No. The zip lines are amazing. To have it at every playground, practically everyone we've been to has. So Sonia Karbecker, she says, when our son was little, we know every playground between Nord Sea and the Alps. Children, the, children only need playgrounds, nothing else. But we have a lot of children museums in Germany. So yeah, we've heard a lot about the really These cool children children's museums. museums. Yeah. <laughs> We're excited to take you to a children's museum, Elda. Okay. Um, and... Okay, Danny Sashen says most of the playgrounds in Germany would be forbidden in the U.S. because of their strict safety rules for them. Which sucks the fun out of them. <laughs> Many parents and kids from America have mentioned this, how German playgrounds are just way more fun. Are you fun too, Ella? You're a fun little kitty. I made Ella great make fun. Annie Mao says, I went to Chicago on an exchange when I was 16. All right, all right, all right, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna end the video here. I, <laughs> I'm i getting, I get the, the gist of this. But um, this is a really good video on, <laughs> oh my God, their kid coming, it was hilarious. But no, this is a really good video on their experience with German playgrounds. I feel like this is exactly what I wanted. I got like a more in-depth view. They had a lot of really good B-roll and footage of the German playground. So I got a more in-depth and descriptive view of not only what German playgrounds are like, but why they are the way they are. So now I can pretty firmly say that I have a good grasp on German playgrounds. And uh, in the process of that, we're definitely learning about a lot about Germany and the way they want to raise their children. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. I certainly did. If you have other videos you'd like for me to check out, whether they be on Germany or any other place along the world, let me know. I'm excited to, to learn more. So yeah, hit the like button, guys. Hit subscribe. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.